Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and I want to start off by apologizing for any background noise you hear in this video. For those of you that have been in the UK when it's hot you'll know it becomes incredibly humid even though the temperature isn't quite that high. Um, so I've got the aircon on, the windows open and yes there will be background noise but that's better than seeing me look even more like a sweaty mess than I probably already do so I apologise for that in advance. Um, obviously as every week we have some incredible watches for you guys and girls to look at. 12 watches ranging from Rolex to Breguet to Amiga to Grand Seiko to Seiko, Squale, Dorenzo, like it really is varied and there's something for everyone at all price ranges and that's something we aim to achieve every single week at Kibble Watches but also something we aim to always have on the website so well over 100 watches listed on there at the moment and again that price range really varies from a couple of hundred pounds to tens of thousands of pounds and everything in between and that's thanks to you guys and girls uh, so yeah thank you all very very much for that now this is my third attempt at trying to do this part of the video um, I've had camera issues and lighting issues and yeah so fingers crossed this is the final take so I apologize if I don't seem as energetic as usual and also hay fever is absolutely destroying me this year I don't know why but it is just on another level so any suggestions let me know down in the comments I am all ears as much as they want to work with the hay fever. But anyway, um, before we dive onto what's on the table, let's take a quick look at what's on wrist. Those keen-eyed people out there would have probably already noticed it. This is a beautiful and incredible Rolex Day Date. Uh, not just any Rolex Day Date, this is a vintage one from 1973, the reference 1807, and that features a bark finish. So a bark bezel and a bark uh, bark finish on the bracelet in the center links as well. I'll show you that in the separate uh, video part. Really wonderful, original dial, original hands, it's got a period box, it's just a beautiful example and things like this just don't come up often. So when they do, if you are interested, you kind of got to act quick, quick because again, pieces like this, once they're gone, for me to find another one, the replacement cost is usually almost always higher than what we're able to buy them in for, if that makes sense. Um, so I actually managed to get this at a pretty good deal, which means I'm passing that saving on to you guys and girls, um, and it will be just under £12,000, which I know is a lot of money, it's no small chunk of change, but when we consider a full gold Rolex, a vintage day date, and a rare one at that, a rare reference, uh, with a rare finish, I think it's kind of amazing to be honest but hey let me know down in the comments what you think of this watch so now that we've got that out of the way let's crack on with what you're here to see and that is the watches and we're going to start with my favorite of this week's drop it is a beautiful brigade from the late 90s you just don't see them like this often and condition like this as well so let's take a closer look at this one okay what a watch to begin this week's episode with uh, I want to apologize just to begin as my camera focus seems to be being a bit weird at the moment so I'm on manual uh, so hopefully I can keep it in the right area that you get perfect focus and it might mean I stay a bit more still because I know some of you say I move the watch around too much when uh, I do these videos so I do apologize if that is the case but anyway what you're looking at right here is a incredible Breguet uh, part of the heritage range and a really really beautiful 18 carry yellow gold reference free 490 from circa late 1990s this model was released around the mid 1990s and continued on for a few years um, but yeah late 1990s i think is pretty safe to say as i say reference free 490 and inside is a manually wound movement hidden behind this beautiful case back as you can see there's a couple of stickers on there uh, this is a manually wound brigade caliber 818 forward slash 4, a nice rectangular brigade movement. You have a cabochon in the crown and the beautiful finishing as you'd come to expect from brigade. And it's paired on its original brigade strap as you can see and it also features its original 18 karat gold brigade buckle which is all stamped and marked on the inside. A really wonderful example and something you just do not see often. I've been speaking with a few clients about this one in general because these are the kind of people who are after 18 karat gold tanks and I've suggested this is actually far rarer and also just a really really cool point of difference to have that sort of rectangular I'd call this more tourneau but that sort of rectangular shape in 18 karat gold manually wound but not a Cartier and I feel like this is incredibly refined but also paired on a different strap it could be very very informal as well which I find really interesting with this piece but let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions 
Okay, and here we go paired on my seven inch wrist, as you can see. Uh, really, really beautiful proportions, very, very nicely done overall, and it just really, really works. So what you're looking at is 30 mil by 40 mil lug to lug, six mil thick and 17 mil on the lugs. It has got a solid gold screw bar uh, that you can unscrew uh, to put on different straps, but do keep that in mind. Uh, it's not a traditional pin uh, to swap out the strap, but go check this one out on the website today. From there, let's go over to Rolex and we're going to start with the GMT Master 16700. We actually have one still, surprisingly still on the website right now with a beautiful Pepsi bezel. This is also incredible. Same reference, same year, but this one has a faded bezel, which I think is really interesting to see the two. So let's take a closer look at this one. So next up, we have the Rolex reference 16700. This is the GMT Master. Now, a lot of people think the GMT Master came first and the GMT Master 2 came later uh, but that wasn't the case they were actually making this uh, reference at the same time as making the GMT Master 2. Uh, the difference between the two uh, is different movement as, as far as I'm aware. The GMT Master, the uh, GMT hand is actually coupled to the hour hand so it's a true GMT always showing you 24 hour time zone of your current time zone if that makes sense. Uh, whereas the GMT Master 2 you could set independently. Now I, I believe that to be the case. Inside this is the automatic Rolex Caliber 3175 and this model's from circa 1991 with an X serial which dates it to 1991. What you're looking at is original tritium dial, original tritium hands, a really wonderful original uh, Pepsi bezel which is slightly faded. Now some places would call this fuchsia but it isn't quite that colour yet um, and fuchsia bezels demand a large premium as well. This is just a beautifully faded bezel which has created this more pinkish hue to the to the red which I think is really wonderful. Uh, as we flip it around you'll see you are presented with your Rolex bracelet uh, with the flip lock clasp and a very clean case back. Overall just a very nice example and great to have the option between something with a bit more age with the bezel or something without as you'll see on the website as well. It doesn't come with any box or paperwork and as always it comes with our warranty as well. So let's show on wrist and dimensions and here we go comfortably on my seven inch wrist as you can see these sports models wear very very well and there's a reason they're so popular so what you're looking at is 40 mil by 46.5 mil lug to lug only 11 mil thick and 20 mil on the lugs with drilled lug holes to be able to swap straps super easy and this model does look fantastic on a leather strap as well it's almost like the faded bezel just begs to be put on leather as well as the bracelet so go check this one out on the website today next up is actually a birth year for me this is a 1997 Rolex Sea Dweller, um, reference 16600, beautiful example, beautiful condition, actually unpolished, and you'll see that in the video with its sticker still on the case back. If you're after one of these, it doesn't get a lot better than this. Yes, box and papers would always be lovely, but that's factored into the price and you'd be paying a huge premium for something you don't wear, um, you know, to each their own. For me, I'd rather have the best example watch I can possibly have, rather than just a complete set for the sake of a complete set. But if you can get both, then it's kind of a win. But anyway, let's take a closer look at this. Next up is this wonderful Rolex Sea Dweller. This is the reference 16600 from 1997 with a U serial. Uh, and inside is the automatic Rolex Caliber 3135. Now I'm a huge fan of these earlier Sea Dwellers because you get all of the charm of a Submariner without the Cyclops, slightly thicker um, and arguably built a bit better because these Sea Dwellers were, were made for true diving, right? That's why they feature, as you can see right there, the helium escape valve. Now this model is in fantastic, pretty much unpolished condition as you can see from those lugs and the overall look and finish of the watch is fantastic. And as we flip it over, you're presented with that iconic Rolex green uh, sticker still on the back, but as you tilt it and get the right angle, you can see the coronet and 16600 stated on that case back. Comes paired on a Rolex bracelet with the dive extension, as you'd expect for a sea dweller and safety lock which flips over as such. Really, really nice example. Very, very clean. And this one doesn't come with any box or paperwork, uh, but as always comes with our warranty. So if you're after a Submariner, but find the Submariner maybe a tad too small on the wrist, uh, and you're not a fan of the Cyclops, which I know is the case for a lot of you, I would heavily and highly recommend a Sea Dweller to consider. Especially a model like this, you've got Tritium, so you've still got that really 
sort of warmer hue to the loom and something that can still develop age as time goes on. This model does feature a little uh, scratch on the bezel, as you can see right there, but other than that, it's in pretty much pristine condition. Well, pristine for a worn watch, right? Like, you just have to be careful with wording because some people take it very literally, but we have to remember we're talking about a 30 plus year old watch that has been worn and enjoyed. So they show on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Now I don't find these sea dwellers too big for my wrist at all. If anything, I find them incredibly comfortable. So what you're looking at is 40 mil by 47.5 mil look to look. 14 mil thick, so definitely thicker than a Submariner, but nothing too insane. And you also have 20 mil on the lugs with drilled lug holes to make strap changing a breeze. Although for me, this model looks best on the bracelet. So go check it out on the website today. From there over to a Zenith Chronomaster El Primero. We just recently sold our other one. Now we have this beautiful blue dial and this really is a beautiful blue dial. So let's take a closer look at that one. Now Zenith time with the Zenith Chronomaster El Primero and this one is in blue as you can see as the camera decides to focus i apologize for the technical difficulties i seem to be having today i'll try and get it figured out for next week for sure um so this as i say is chronomaster el primero blue uh, in 38 millimeters they've discontinued this model now which surprises me because i would have thought it had been one of their better sellers um you have the blue dial the contrasting sub dials date over there and something to keep in mind with this caliber is the first position of the crown is to change the time and the second position position is to change the date so backwards to what you're probably usually familiar with standard uh, chronograph as you'd expect really nice action on the pushes I've all, I always like how these El Primeros feel they have a very nice click and spring to them uh, which is very very satisfying to use the dial on this one is fantastic a nice dark blue which in a lot of lights looks black but once it catches that light it really just glows that beautiful blue condition on this one is fantastic and beautiful exhibition case back and the movement is the Zenith El Primero Caliber 400, uh, a movement they've used across the board. It does come on its original Zenith strap, Zenith deployment buckle, and a spare strap is included in the box, and it's a Zenith strap as well. This one is from July 2019 with its full box and paperwork as well. So let's show it on wrist and tour dimensions. And here we go comfortably on my seven inch wrist, as you can see right here. So what you're looking at is 38 mil by 46.5 mil look to look, 12 mil thick and 19 mil on the look. So a little bit awkward, but there are options out there. So go check out this watch on the website today. Now onto an Amiga Speedmaster Broad Arrow, and this isn't the anniversary edition. Well, it is a anniversary edition, but it isn't the trilogy set anniversary piece. This is actually a 42 mil model in the sort of classic Speedmaster case. Really nicely done, and again, insane value for money for well under £4,000, which considering how crazy Speedmasters have gone recently, I think uh, I think this is a good one to get, and also it's not uh, from Philips with their recent scandal, so that's even better. Let's take a closer look at this one. Next up, the Amiga Speedmaster Broad Arrow celebrating uh, one of the anniversaries for the original Amiga Speedmaster. The broad arrow as it's often called now this one is from circa late 1990s they actually uh, debuted this model in 1997 and ran it for only a couple of years i believe uh, you can see you feature the broad arrow hands which make this model famous and the bezel the stainless steel bezel with a tachymeter it was the first time a tachymeter was put on a stainless steel bezel on the outside of a watch uh, ever that was what sort of the speedmaster broad arrow held as uh, as one of the first now the reference to this one is 3594.50.00 and inside is a manually wound Amiga Caliber 1861 as you can see Hippocampus proudly stated on the case back nice and simple and you feature the uh, sort of classic Speedmaster case profile with the curved lugs and 42 mil in size. So the trilogy is has been brought down in size to be much more like the original and also the case shape is slightly different again to be like the original. Whereas this is like a modern interpretation of the original and it's also a fraction of the cost, uh, which I think is fantastic. We don't have the original bracelet, but we've paired it on one of these um, JB Champion Forstner bracelets with the stretch link and the flat link. A very, very good looking watch. And it does come with box, no paperwork. But let's show this one on wrist and tour dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. It's gonna be no surprise this one wears fantastically. If you've worn a Speedmaster, uh, the classic 42 mil size, you will find this perfectly acceptable as well because it's the same size. Uh, so what you're looking at is 42 mil 
by 47.5 mil look to look 14 mil thick but do keep in mind some of that thickness is that heavily domed acrylic crystal which we can polish prior to shipping on request so just let us know and 20 mil on the lugs so this will look fantastic on a leather strap as well just like any speedmaster it's a strap monster so go check out this one on the website today from there over to sink a little left field this is a formex uh, and it's a limited edition for collective with a bronze dial i'm a big fan of what formex do and i think their build quality is incredible so let's take a closer look at this one so next up is this limited edition formex this was done with collective which is a group uh, that was founded of, of basically watch enthusiasts that worked with brands to provide very, very limited editions uh, exclusively through their club. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Collective has opened up uh, their marketplace to, to basically everyone now. I think you still might need to be a member, um, but this one pretty much sold out instantly. And it's a really great example of what Formex can do and Collective's vision on watches. Now, this is the Reef model and it features a bronze dial. That dial is uh, beautifully finished and brushed and is going to maintain that color because they've put a finish on over the top of it to basically stop it from patina uh, which I think is really interesting because you get that beautiful tone that bronze provides and the sort of uh, the way it plays with the light without the potential of it going weird and green which bronze typically does um, so the reference to this one I won't bore you with is quite a long reference. Inside is an automatic Salita SW300-1 behind that beautifully engraved case back and that is chronometer certified and it comes with its chronometer certificate as well. The watch is from April 2023 and it does come with its box and paperwork and as you can see it has that beautiful black uh, raised bezel which just looks fantastic. Really nice finished bracelet, solid screw links, um, nice quick easy quick adjust uh, on the strap itself and also you have a uh, glide adjust. I, I'm unsure exactly what they call it but it's essentially uh, on the fly adjustment which has got many tiny micro adjustments so you can get the perfect fit. I wish more brands did this so well done Formex for including that but let's show this one on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. So it's not a small watch, but it's by no means a big watch. It wears incredibly well, thanks to that cushion shape and those flanks on the side of the case as well, which add a bit of size, but really sort of bring it in at the same time. So what you're looking at is 42 mil by 48.5 mil lug to lug, 11 mil thick, which is incredibly thin for this style of watch, and 22 mil on the lugs, which helps with the wearability because it's a big watch with a wider bracelet, which just keeps this flow going all the way around and it just looks fantastic. So go check out this one on the website today. And they're over to a Grand Seiko with uh, the Quartz GMT in blue. If I'm not mistaken, they've discontinued the models. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but we also have the black, which is coming in a week or two to the website. But for now, let me show you this beautiful blue dial. So let's take a closer look. So Grand Seiko time with a 9F86 Quartz. Now the 9F series is very sort of um, sought after by Grand Seiko collectors as being one of the best quartz movements ever created, which I always find super interesting. So this is the SBGN005G uh, with the blue dial and the beautiful pops of red in the wording GMT and the GMT hand itself. Now this dial is a very deep glossy blue and in a lot of lights it does look black but then when it catches that light at the perfect angle all of a sudden it explodes and becomes this almost electric blue. Really fascinating and really beautifully done and as always with Grand Seiko incredible finishing throughout from the hands to the dial to the case itself. You have a steel bezel which is fixed, nice screw down crown and a really beautiful profile on the case with brushed and polished uh, throughout. Nice brush bracelet, uh, case back uh, still features its sticker and overall this watch is in fantastic condition. So as I say inside is a Quartz Grand Seiko Caliber 9F86 and this model's from October 2021 with its box and paperwork as well. But let's show on wrist and tall dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. If you're on the market for a Quartz and smaller size GMT um, from a brand like Grand Seiko, this is definitely one to consider. So 39 mil by 44.5 mil lug to lug, 11.5 mil thick and 19 mil on the lugs. Yes, a little awkward, but there are options out there and drilled lug holes to make strap changing nice and easy. So go check out this one on the website today. Now on to Seiko Zimbi Mini Turtle Thailand Limited Edition in yellow. It's fantastic. 
big fan of this, big fan of the size as well. And I think a lot of you guys and girls will be too. And also you do not see these Invis often. So let's take a closer look at this one. So now Seiko time with the Mini Turtle as it's named. And this is the Zimbi limited edition for Thailand. And Thailand have an incredibly strong Seiko collecting community. And they often feature some of the most interesting, in my opinion, limited editions. And they very rarely uh, find their way out of Thailand. And this one thankfully has, and has ended up on my website, which is fantastic. So limited to 990 pieces. This is the SRPD19, and it features that gorgeous yellow textured dial with the highlight of red in the, uh, the minute hand, Cyclops over the date yellow and black bezel the contrasts are wonderful screw down crown and as we flip it over a nicely decorated case back stating which number out of 999 with zimbi uh, which essentially means like a shark fish or something like that we put the exact definition on the website and how it's broken down as well um, this one's from october 2019 it does come with its box and paperwork and inside is an automatic seiko caliber 4r35 paired on its original rubber strap as I say, these watches are fantastic. I think the limited editions are great, uh, but this standard model, the Mini Turtle, is really great if you like the turtle design but want something slightly modernized. Because uh, I do know some people say the turtle feels a bit dated. I disagree, but this is their sort of answer to that. And this is a really wonderful example you just won't find again or very unlikely to find again. So let's show it on wrist and tall dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist with summer coming up. This would make one great summer watch, especially down at the beach. Uh, 42 mil by 42.5 mil look to look. That's a really interesting dimension. 12.5 mil thick and 20 mil on the look. So endless options and drilled lug holes so you can swap nice and easy for sink else if you wish. But to be honest, this pairing, it works perfectly well and is super, super comfortable. So go check out this watch on the website today. Now on to a Seiko Presage tribute to 1964 with a beautiful sort of greeny dial. I don't know exactly quite what you call it but it's a very, very cool dial. So let's take a close look at this one. So Seiko Presage time with the tribute to 1964 limited edition. And I apologize if the focus isn't coming in on this one, uh, but this features a very, very interesting dial, like a greeny turquoisey blue. I, it just plays with the light and really transform each time you wear it. Sometimes it's like a mint green. Other times it's like a really dark green. It is fantastic to be honest. Uh, as I say, this is a tribute to 1964 and is limited to 1,964 watches. The reference is the SPB129J1 and it comes paired on its original free link bracelet with a simple folding over clasp, which is nicely done and a very plain case back with the limited edition number. It is highly polished. No screw down crown, but it is signed and it features a friction fit bezel, which you can rotate quite freely and is this sort of black uh, material which just looks really good and contrasts nicely against the dial as well. Uh, inside is the automatic Seiko Caliber 6R35 and this one's from July 2020 with its box and paperwork. So let's show it on wrist and tour dimensions. Again, another fantastic summer option if you're looking for that. Slightly different summer watch with a pop of color, but maybe something you can also wear just in general. I think this ticks those boxes. So 41 mil by 48 mil look to look, 11 mil thick, and again, 20 mil on the lugs. No drilled lug holes on this one, but still simple enough to swap out the strap. So go check it out on the website today. Now onto Squale with the Super Squale. This is one of the more recent Squale limited, uh, not limited re releases is what I'm trying to say. Uh, one of the most recent Squale releases, and it's a favorite of mine. The beads of rice bracelet, the very, very clean, simple skin diver look with the faux patina. I think it all works incredibly well. And again, this is fantastic value for money. So let's take a close look at this one. Next up is Super Squale time. And as I said in the intro, I think Squale absolutely knocked it out of the park with this release. The overall design is fantastic, but as a lover of vintage, that will come as no surprise, especially as a lover of skin divers, which is this, it's totally taken its inspiration from, from featuring that matte black dial, the nice puffy radium styled loom plots, which by the way, uh, the circle ones don't actually have a surround or a metal ring around them. So it really is this blob of loom on the dial, which I think looks fantastic. Nice hands, very classic. And again, that tritium looking loom, so it's like a faux patina is done really nicely the tone is actually perfect all paired with a nice stainless steel bezel beads of rice bracelet which i think was a good call simple clasp 
a nice decorated case back and the clasp does feature a dive extension which I think is fantastic and micro adjust so you can get that perfect fit. Now I won't bore you with the reference to this one, it is quite a long reference uh, but this one is from April 2023 with its box and paperwork and inside is the automatic Salita SW200-1 dash with uh, no phantom date disc, uh, dan phantom date window, sorry, which is good. So some watches don't have a date, but they still have the date position. It's actually quite common, uh, whereas this one doesn't. And it is a screw down crown as well, which again is fantastic. Nice smiley fonts down there with the squale. But they show this one on wrist and tall dimensions. Now for me, this is where this watch just gets even better. The proportions are truly fantastic. 38 mil by 45 mil look to look, only 12 mil thick and 18 mil on the looks. It's one of those designs that just works and it works on any wrist size as well. So go check it out on the website today. Now onto a Squale Onda. This is the Azoro Blue Limited Edition they did previous to the one you can get now. Um, I don't know why they did that because you can now just get both. Uh, but this is the original limited edition from before. So let's take a closer look at this one. Now onto another Squale. This time it is the Squale 50 Atmos Onda in Azoro Blue, which is almost this purple tone, really, really beautifully done. Nice white uh, loom, as you can see throughout, and you have this Yachtmaster style bezel, as I call it, with the raised numerals and indices, which just really pops in the light and again adds to the overall look uh, of the watch because you've got this textured dial, textured bezel, and this highly polished case. I think it just works really beautifully. You've got the classic uh, Squale. Uh, case shape and profile that I think we've all become accustomed to and nice simple case back as well So as I say, this is the 50 Atmos and this one's from July 2020 and was limited to 50 pieces total uh, More information about that can be found on our website and inside is the automatic ETA 2824 Elabore so the Elabore version or Elabore however you pronounce it Basically meant it was a higher finished and a higher regulated basic ETA model uh, which is fantastic and this is back when Squale were using ETA rather than Salita. To be honest it doesn't make a difference but it just goes to show how things have changed over the years. But let's show this one on wrist and tall dimensions. And there we go on my 7 inch wrist on its original black rubber Squale strap with Squale signed buckle. Uh, what you're looking at is 41.5mm by 48.5mm look to look, 13mm thick and 20mm on the look, so endless options for this one. But I think the strap pairing works really well and again with summer, this is a great summer watch. So snap it up, ready for the nice sunny weather that we currently have. Go check it out on the website today. And last but by no means least, the Dorenzo. This is a really, really cool piece and again Dorenzo we've had quite a few of and their build quality and finishing and everything is really great for the money, but I think what makes them stand out is their design. They do really nice and interesting designs. A lot of soft corners and soft edges, I, I find, and this is the perfect example of that. So let's take a closer look at this Now one. for the Dorenzo, this is the Dorenzo DRZ03 Eclipse, no dates with the blue dial and that gorgeous blue bezel, which looks like a old acrylic, uh, acrylic bezel with the way it's sort of got the dome to it and the raised, uh, profile of it, it's uh, encapsulated in like a sapphire, it looks fantastic. The hands and the indices on this are beautiful and really sort of soft, if, if you get what I mean. They just have a, a softness to them, which I think is really nice. Nice screw down crown and very nice profile on the case. It's all simple stuff, but done very, very nicely. Inside this is the automatic Salita SW200-1, behind that beautifully engraved case back. And it does come on its original bracelet, which features, as you can see, multiple adjustments, which is great, uh, and nice big links as well as a very robust feeling uh, safety class, which you have to really push down, but then it opens as such with the push pins, nice and simple. Really beautiful example and a great looking watch. So they show on wrist and tall dimensions. And there we go on my seven inch wrist. I think I may have forgot, but this is from October 2020 and it does come with its box and paperwork. And in regards to any focusing issues on this one, I do apologize, the camera's playing up, but also this is just an incredibly difficult watch to capture uh, because of all the different textures, uh, colors, sorry, and highlights, how it sort of plays with the light. Uh, so what you're looking at is 40mm by 47.5mm look to look, 12mm thick and 20mm on the lugs. So you can totally swap this one out, but the bracelet is super comfortable. 
and very nice looking on the watch as well. So go check it out on the website today. So there you have it guys and girls, 12 watches this week, incredible variety as always, and that's thanks to you guys and girls. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, and you know, the next few weeks are looking just as busy. Uh, 12 weeks every single week has been the case for the past few months. I always thought it would sort of be eight or nine pieces at most every week. So it's amazing to see how much further we've got and how much further we're still going. I don't envision putting more than 12 watches in a drop. I think anything more than 12, it becomes a bit too much. These videos are gonna become too long. The prep each week is just gonna become a bit too much, I think. Um, but we'll see. Let me know down in the comments. Do you think 12 is a good number? Do you think more could be done, 15? Uh, or do you think it should be less? Do you think it should go back to the days of six? Uh, which was many, many, probably years ago now at this point. Um, so let me know down in the comments. I'm always interested to read what you guys say. I might not always reply, but I do definitely always read the comments. So thank you all very much, and we'll see you all again next week. Take care.